Welcome to Super Easy Physics and Mathematics. Today we are looking at the review of Physics Paper 6 Alternative to Practical Variant 2, October November 2022. This is a strategy solution to help you do better in your physics practical. The video is less than 30 minutes. The total duration for this paper is one hour. You are expected to answer all questions. The total mark is 40 mark. Yeah, this question had question one has to do with missing hot water with cold water. And the, the setup show you need the thermometer to measure the room temperature, measure the initial temperature of the water in the beaker and to also measure the temperature of the hot water and measure the final temperature of the mixture. This is the thermometer, shows the room temperature QR. So what is the room temperature? If you look at it, so you have 21, 22, 23 degrees Celsius. The student records the temperature of the cold water, 19. Temperature of the hot water is yet. She immediately pour 100 cm cube of hot water into a beaker containing 100 cm cube of cold water, and she record the highest temperature, the temperature of the mixture QM, as 46 degree. Subject to precaution, you will take to obtain an accurate value of the temperature of the mixture, stir the mixture thoroughly and while you are stirring it, make sure that the liquid does not spill out of the beaker. Wait, uh, view the thermometer at right angle to the scale to avoid error due to parallax. Then wait until the reading on the thermometer stop rising before you take your reading. Then the thermometer should not touch the side of the beaker to avoid breakage you know that is it okay calculate the decrease in temperature that is the difference between the temperature of the hot water and the final temperature of the mixture so you do that just a simple calculation so you get that 42 degree then calculate the temperature rise that is the temperature the temperature difference between the temperature of the cold water and the final temperature of the mixture. So now this principle deal with heat supplied by hot water is equal to heat gained by cold water. So when an object is gaining heat, the temperature rises. That's why the temperature of the cold water will increase. Then when an object is losing heat, the temperature drops. That's why the temperature of the, of the hot water is dropping. So the, temp the hot water is going to lose heat and then the cold water is going to gain heat. And then based on the principle of thermodynamics, total heat gain is equal to total heat loss for bodies that are in contact. So you have the cold water and the hot water in contact inside the beaker. So there's going to be an heat energy flow, heat flow between the two bodies. So we have that 27 degree. Now calculate the average temperature theta H between theta, the hot water and the cold water. So all you mean just add the temperature of the hot temp, uh, temperature and then the temperature of the cold water, you divide it by two. Average, that means you are looking for the middle value between them so that the mean value that is 53 points now state whether the average temperature and the final temperature of the mission can be considered to be equal within the limit of experimental accuracy justify your answer by reference to the result now a question that to do with justification you compare the value and give your recommendation then secondly, 
to for you to answer the justification all you need to do is to look at the value to see if they support what you have said in the statement or not so you always make reference to the result given to you in the experiment so now qa is not equal to qm why now the average temperature is 53.5 degree Celsius. Why the final temperature of the mixture is 46 degrees Celsius? If you look at the difference between this one, the they are outside the range of experimental accuracy. So for you to consider them equal because the value is the difference between them is over 10 percent. So, but if the difference between them is less than 10%, you can assume them to be equal. That you just assume that maybe a slight error was done in the while carrying out the experiment. Stage two requirement when reading the volume of water in measuring cylinder to obtain accurate result. While you read from the lower meniscus and then you position your eye perpendicular to the surface and you make sure that the cylinder is placed on a horizontal surface. So view perpendicularly, then take the reading from the bottom of the lower meniscus, then place the measuring cylinder on a flat surface. Subscribe and we will help you to easily upgrade your performance to an A+. CPAM is the solution to better grade. Now, Question two, student investigate the position of image in a plane mirror. So this one has to be optics tracing uh, ray of light. So you have the plane mirror MR. Then this is the eye. So he's viewing from here. That means the light is coming from here, strikes the mirror and is reflected in this direction. So you know the principle of reflection. Whenever you are using mirror, what we are looking, we are trying to verify the principle of reflection. And in the principle of reflection, angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. So let's see. All you just have to do to be able to answer this tracing question, follow the instruction meticulously, one after the other. Now, so these are the set of instructions. So we'll just follow it and see how we get the value so let's take the first one the mirror mr show the position of the mirror draw a normal through the e center so all you need to do measure the distance mr with your rule and then you trace the center since it's eight on my own so you put your normal so this line is a normal and Follow the instruction, label, label the normal NL and then the point of intersection B. So that's how we do that. So we've done this one. So you get one mark for that. Let's go to the next one. Now, draw a line 7 cm at an angle of incident of 30 degrees. So you take a 30 degree. Then the student placed the reflecting surface of the mirror vertically on this and then he placed two pin on AB and suggests suitable distance that he can put between this one. The distance between pins should be 5 cm, 6 cm and above so that the pin can be aligned. State the reason why you suggest this one is so that the pin your, can be aligned when you are viewing it for perfect alignment so the distance can be greater than that then to ensure greater accuracy and to ensure the pins are aligned in a straight line okay. so let's look at those questions so what do they say we should do draw a line 5 cm at an angle 60 so with your protractor measure and take note when you are measuring don't make the mistake of measuring the 60 from m you measure from the normal so we are going to measure it from line b BL so 90 this 80 is 10 70 20 60 30 so from there you put your ruler 
they say you should draw a line 7 cm so let's draw the line 7 cm so along that normal so do that then you put the position p1 and p2 so the pin so if you look at it the distance so here is one then this that is what 5 cm apart now for you to be able to hack this question just look at the try to measure the distance between uh, position of the pin on the reflected ray this distance between p3 and p4 that will give you an idea how you can position p1 and p2 the position of the optical pin all right so we have done that let's go to the next level the student view the image of p1 and p2 then he marks that follow the instruction appear exactly behind that draw a line through the position that is you are drawing the ref the reflected ray until it meets mr then measure and record the acute angle between the line through the position and the mirror not with the norm at this time so follow take note the line between so let's do that so you have this they say you should connect this pin so the reflected ray connect it with a line so so let's connect that we have connected that okay now after connecting this line let it meet the mirror mr at b then what the mistake most students made in this exam is by measuring this angle as beta they measure the ref the angle of reflection but the question did not say you should measure the angle of reflection so so look at it you say measure and record the acute angle beta between the line that connects p the pin p3 and p4 and the line that is a mirror so that is this so if you measure this so let's see that is about 58 degree so that is the angle so once you follow this instruction but this is this d i is actually the key that made most students to fail this question they didn't follow this instruction most students end up measuring this and they just set their own question all right okay so add unit what is the unit of the angle angle of incident is measured in theta angle the angle between the mirror and the reflected ray beta is measured is an angle so it's measured in degree then the sum of angle when you add angle is also an angle so the unit is going to be degree 30 degree 58 degree then just follow the mathematical equation a plus b 30 plus 58 give us 88 then a student repeated the value the same experiment using angle of incident of 45 degree and you add that together so do that that is 91 now take note another question you might be asked in this exam is what is the possible angle of incident you can take you know when you are carrying out this experiment the angle of incident can only lie between 0 and 90 degree it cannot be higher than that so now the student place the reflecting surface of the mirror vertically with the face at b he repeat the procedure using the angle of incident of that so he record that complete the table we have already done that now subject a relationship if there is any between the two value so the values are identical within the limit of experimental accuracy okay the value are almost equal the value are very close the value are not too far from each other so any of this thing can be what they wanted you to write here now in order to investigate further possible relationship between the value of a plus b more values are required suggest so value of the angle of incident you know, i said this earlier that the angle of incident should range between 0 and 90 but not higher so all you need to do 
for every experiment, in order for you to find average or plot the graph, you need at least five values. So just suggest values. So 20, 30, 40, 50, and 65. So, but don't use a uh, value like 33, 43, because of plotting of your graph. So you have to use value that are either unit of tens or multiples of five it's for easy plotting because of the plotting of your graph. So you can use 25, you can use 35, you can use 45, 55, 65, but don't put value like 63 and all that. Now, the student does this experiment with care, suggests a practical reason why the result may not be exactly those that the theory of reflection predicts. Now, the major reason is that it had to do with tracing of line. And when you are tracing the line, one thing you should know is that as you are tracing the line, if you trace a line, you use a narrow line. You can, because of your protractor, you can easily read it accurately. But if you now use, if you use a, a thick line, for example, you use a thick line, so if the line is thick, you know that your protractor, the value between your protractor is very small. So when you use a thick line, so this thick line, if you draw your line using a, a pencil that is blunt, the angle is going to overlap. So you will not be accurate. And then also when you are using your pin, if you use a big pin, so how do you draw a line? So this angle, the pin size, affects the accuracy of your work. So, so if you use a small pin, very good. So this, you can easily draw a line that is more accurate. But if you draw this, draw a line here, okay? The pin, so it affects your value. So quickly, what you do, so the Things that introduce error is the size of the pin and then drawing line up between the pin. Then if the pins are too thick, it affects your reading. Then draw a line that is too thick. So those are some of the problems you come across that make the reading your answer, the result of the experiment not to be the same as the normal procedure. Now, the thickness of the mirror also affects perfection, then the precision of your protractor. So if any of these things, if the your protractor you are using have calibration defects, it's going to affect the result you will measure. And that will make your result to be different from the actual theory of reflection, which says that well, the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. Yeah, question three have to do with the principle of moment. A student balance a meter rule. They balance, you balance it on a pivot or fulcrum. The balance point is X. Then you have the load that is placed at a distance here, 90 away. So, okay, if you, you can now look at the distance between when the load is positioned so well, let's just follow the procedures. Now the student balance the meter row on the pivot. So the balance point S is this, showing this. So let's, if we magnify it, so we look at that. So if you magnify it, you have, this is 48, 49. So 48.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. All right, so 48.8 cm, so that is the balance point. So record the reading, write it. Now, the meter row is four millimeter thick. The pivot is under the meter row. The scale on top of the meter row suggests how you will obtain an accurate value of the scale reading X. All you need to do is view vertically. So view the scale of the rule perpendicularly. 
So avoid error due to parallel. So that is all you need to do. Now, the student places, this is just the procedure of the experiment. And when you want to plan your experiment, you know, every alternative to practical question have a question that have to, that where a procedure has been written for you. So when you want to answer question four, just flip it back to this place and it will be as a guide for you. So you have the procedure, you have the recording of the observation, then repeating your procedure, then recording, forming your table of value. So this question, there is a question that you can use to hack the planning of experiment, which is question four. Most time, this question of a full experimental procedure come before the planning. So the answer you need for question four is still within the practical question. So, so that we don't waste time, let's go. But most time, read the procedure so that you can understand the practical very well because it might be different from what you have done during your preparation normal course program. The practical you did in the class may be different from the procedure may be slightly adjusted. Like you saw that the one we, we just did, the verification of, um, of the law of reflection using play mirror there was a slight uh, modification of the practical in this exam. So all, for you to be able to avoid that mistake, make sure you read each of the instructions given to you line by line and just follow it. And when you do that, there is no way you can get the 40 mark in this particular uh, paper. So let's go. We have the table. Now what they want is put the unit this is load. So if I have the reciprocal of, of load, now what is the reciprocal of Newton? The load is measured in Newton. So if I now take the reciprocal, all I need to do, the unit will also be the reciprocal. So that's why it becomes one over N. So with that, so let's plot the graph of A on the y axis and the reciprocal of the load on s axis. Start the y axis at a equals to 30. So you are expected, so your year should be 30. At the beginning, take note of this starting point. So we have that. Label your axis. So you have that. So we, with this, we can plot the value. So when A is 80, the reciprocal of the load is 1. So we've plotted the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the 5 points. So draw your line of best fit. So if you have that, so this is off, it's an error, experimental error. If you look at it, actually, there are two values that are errors. So this is off the line, this is off the line. So that's what we call line of best fit, one to the left, then one point to the right. So with this, I think the next thing we're going to do is to find the gradient. So now find the gradient of the curve that you have just plotted. And then the gradient is numerically equal to the distance d between the pivot and the center of the load Q. Record the value d to a suitable number or significant figure for this experiment. Now, if you look at, okay, let's just go and do the, now, so let's use the graph to the gradient. So this is the graph that we have plotted already. So let's find the gradient. So you draw your triangle now, take note, when you are drawing your triangle, draw the triangle such that you take it from a point. So I'm using this point to where the line cross the axis. So I'm using this point. So take note of this point here. So, and then I use, and then your triangle should cover more than half, more than half of the graph. 
of your curve. So don't make the triangle to be too small. So let's look at the vertical, so the top 80, then the horizontal 49. So we can now look at the difference, the rise, that is 31 cm delta A. Then let's look at the horizontal, the run. So we look at the starting point, that is 0 0.22. Then we look at the, the end of it, the load. So delta, the reciprocal of the load, that was 0 0.7A. So with that, we can find the gradient. So that gives us 39.74 Newton meter. Now, how do we get the, the unit? This is reciprocal. So reciprocal of reciprocal, that is a number, so you multiply that. So it's like saying CM divided by 1 over N. So if you do that, you get this. So that is our... Then from the marking scheme, the answer is between 39 and 41. So our value is correct, so approximately that. So let's so put your value approximately. Now, this question... F is a giveaway question. The gradient is numerically equal to the distance. So what they are telling you that work, G is equal to D. So whatever you have here, write it here. So it's equal to 40 cm. Question four is a planning. Very good. Now, a student investigate the effect of resistance of a wire when the tension in the wire is increased. The apparatus is shown in figure 4.1. The tension in the wire is increased by adding load to the hook. So you have the, a wire that is cramped here so that it cannot move. Then put it on a pulley so that it can roll. So if you add tension, if the wire is thin, what happens is that the wire can become longer. So what is going to happen? If you put heavy load, what is going to happen to the wire? The wire will get longer. And when the wire gets longer, what is going to happen to resistance? Resistance will increase because the resistance of a wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire. And then another factor again is that when the wire becomes longer, the wire will become thinner. So what is going to happen? Resistance is inversely proportional to cross-sectional area. So resistance will also increase. So what is going to happen is that in your reading, the current here will be reducing. So that is just what we want to see because they put the wire on a pulley so that it can roll and then the tension, as the tension increases, the wire gets longer. So let's see. Right, the student measure the current and the voltage across the wire. Now, the student take all the necessary precaution required. Now, the following apparatus are available. A resistance wire that is this, a power source that is connected to this. Now, the ammeter A to measure the current flowing, the voltmeter, then selection of load. You have these ones given to us. Now, plan an experiment to investigate the effect of the resistance of a wire when the tension in the wire is increased. Now, complete the circuit. Show a voltmeter connected to measure the difference across the resistance wire. Now, explain briefly how you will carry out the investigation. So, just follow this procedure. So, we are going to take each of them. So, if you look at this, this point 1 is 1 mark, point 2, 1 mark, 2, 3 mark, 4 mark, 5 mark, repeating your experiment, 1 mark, so there is 7 mark normally attached to this question. So let's see how we can do that. Now, let's take the first major point. Complete the circuit. So where will you put the voltmeter? You put the voltmeter across this point. So you draw that. For you to record the voltmeter so for completing the circuit you have your one mark so let's go now explain how you will carry out the investigation so this is what your procedure there is a second major point that will give you like this procedure in the marking scheme will give you three mark so let's see how you get a three mark 
I set the distance between the crocodile crib to be equal to this. So throughout the experiment, one value, I'm keeping the distance between the crocodile constant. Then keep it constant throughout the experiment. I attach a load of tension to Newton to the wire and record the potential difference and the current and the value of the load. So for stating this, you have one mark. Then I calculate the resistance and record the value. For stating that, you have one mark. Then I repeat the process using the tension of two and I calculate the value of the average. So what I mean is that for every load, I repeat this process to see if I make mistake in my reading. So to make your state, your experiment reliable, so you have to, to eliminate error. That's why you repeat procedure while take, carrying out experimental investigation. Then the next one, I repeat step one to four. So I'm going to uh, vary the load. So I started with two Newton. So if I use four Newton load, I will do the same thing measure the resistance and the and the current then find measure the potential difference and the current then evaluate my resistance and then do it the second time so i do that for six newton eight newton and ten newton so for doing that i have my one mark so already we have four mark out of this seven mark so state the key variable you keep constant in this experiment number one the length of wire between the crocodile clip i said it we set it at 100 cm so we have that and then the other thing you can also keep constant is the resistant wire the resistant wire that you are using you won't use different resistant wire use only one resistant wire throughout the experiment now draw a table of value and label the column so this is the where you have your cyst mark the major point so draw your table of value the tension we have two four you can write it but they say you don't need to write the value okay so we have the voltage measure in volts put the unit current measured in ampere then resistance measured in ohm okay Explain how you will use the reading to reach a conclusion. Why well, I compare the load with resistance to see if there's an effect. Then I plot the graph of load against resistance, so tension, then resistance, you get your value. But most time is that our tension increase, resistance increase. So your graph is supposed to go like this. So So with this, we have come to the end of this practical exam. I wish you good luck in, as you prepare for your alternative to practical paper. Subscribe to Super Easy Physics and Mathematics. Subscribe and we will help you to easily upgrade your performance to an A+. CPAM is the solution to better grade.